In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus left Jericho with his disciples and the large crowd, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting at the side of the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and to say, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. And many of them scolded him and told him to keep quiet, but he only shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man. Courage, they said, Get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he jumped up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus spoke, What do you want me to do for you? Rabuni, the blind man, said to him, Master, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. And immediately his sight returned, and he followed him along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The evangelist Mark, dear brothers and sisters, narrates the healing of Bartimaeus so vividly that on listening to it we seem to see the man by the roadside, a plate by his side for people to drop some coins in, and his walking stick resting by the wall. We imagine the man curiously inquiring why so many people were approaching and his excitement on being told that Jesus was passing by. But then, by then he had probably heard about the other blind men, people, who had been healed by him. And so he started shouting at the top of his voice, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And we imagine the blind man jumping up all excited, full of hope, casting off his cloak, as Mark says, and on being told that Jesus was sending for him, we seem to listen to his pleading, Master, let me see again. And see him, in fact, jumping around full of joy, sheer joy, on being able to see the world around him, able to see people, able to see flowers, able to see the sun. Let us go through the details of Mark's narrative. Only Mark gives the name of the man, Bartimaeus. He translated for his Christian readers, who being non-Jews, did not know Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke. The name, Mark says, means son of Timaeus, because Bar in Aramaic means son of. In a way of clearly expressing the identity of the person we are speaking about as when we say, I mean, the son of so and so. The blind man started shouting at the top of his voice, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. The cry amounted to, Jesus, you are the Messiah, have pity on me. This was a sincere confession of faith, a surprising one taking into consideration the scanty knowledge the man still had of Jesus. Until now, whenever anyone proclaimed him Messiah, Jesus uh, forbid the man or the person to spread the news around. We read about in Mark 1 ch verse 34, chapter 3 verse 12, chapter 5 43, chapter 8 30. But the time had now come to proclaim openly who he was. He did not prevent Bartimaeus, the man, from confessing him as the Messiah, as he would not prevent the crowd from doing the same. A few days later, when he solemnly entered Jerusalem, we can read about it in Mark chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Jesus himself then would proclaim it openly when the high priest would ask him about it, it on the night of his passion, and he would be condemned to death on the basis of that confession. He claimed to be Messiah. He claimed to be God. Mark tells us that the people got annoyed at the ma blind man shouting out his plea and ordered him to keep quiet. But how could he keep quiet? 
by now a light within his heart helped the mind blind man to see that Jesus was not only his only hope to recover the eyesight but his savior as well a force within him compelled him to shout even more louder Jesus son of David have pity on me though still blind the man could see who Jesus really was far better than those around him Mark makes us feel the expectation of Bartimaeus on being told that Jesus was calling him. He threw his cloak away, the gospel says, and extended his hand for someone to lead him to Jesus. You may be sure that he did not care a bit for the few coins in his plate now left unguarded. Mark makes us feel the kindness of Jesus as well. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. We feel like telling Jesus, what a question, Lord. What can a blind man desire except to see again? You know what he wants, see again. Yet, Jesus wanted to hear it from Bartimaeus himself, from his mouth. And once again, Mark has left in the Aramaic language the title by which the blind man addressed Jesus, as if in an effort to help us feel the intensity of man's pleading, Rabuni. Master, Rabuni, let me see again. That was a prayer. It was also an act of faith, an act of trust in Jesus, all the three in one. Prayer, act of faith, act of trust. Mark concludes his narrative by telling us that on recovering his eyesight, Bartimaeus followed Jesus along the road. Bartimaeus followed Jesus along the road. When some time back Jesus had cured another blind man at Bethsaida, Jesus sent him away quietly, told him to go home, which means Bartimaeus obtained from Jesus two favors. First, he recovered his bodily eyesight, but a much more greater favor, he obtained the spiritual eyesight, that is, faith in Jesus, and the privilege of following him, that is, of becoming his disciples. Jesus never does things halfway. Each gift of his is meant to prepare us to receive another, yet more precious gift. The purpose of all Jesus' gifts is to prepare us for that final gift, namely eternal life. Early Christians delighted in reflecting time and again on the episode of Bartimaeus' cure. As we said above, the episode in the gospel narration, uh, 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 Bartimaeus' recovery of eyesight together with the cure of the man born blind narrated by John became a favorite theme among the Christian communities in the early church. It is not difficult why the Christians often remembered this and spoke about it. Christians saw in the two blind men a picture of themselves and of the way Jesus had brought them to faith in himself. Before they believed in Christ, their spiritual situation had been as pitiable as that of the blind people, deprived of eyesight. Jesus had displayed his tremendous power and mercy by bringing them to faith in him. A unique change had taken place in their lives after accepting Jesus as their Savior and becoming his disciples. This miracle, dear God's family, of healing the blind Bartimaeus, in th through this miracle, Jesus teaches us some very important truth. First, he teaches us, deprived of faith in him, all men and women are spiritually blind. Without faith, we are all spiritually blind. Persons without faith are unable to discover Jesus passing by time and again in the events of their daily life. They are unable to see God's plans of love for them. St. Paul tells his Christians of Ephesus that life without faith is aimless. It, it has no direction. It is not just aimless, but it's actually sinful. Since ambition, pride, greed, and love for pleasure pull us in various directions, always further and further away from God. Secondly, 
through this miracle, Jesus tells us that he invites everyone to come to him. He does it time and again in a variety of ways. There are, however, particular moments in a life, in the life of a person, when his invitation becomes more demanding, pressing. For a person to accept Jesus' invitation, two things are essential. First, he must be a very contrite person who recognizes his blindness, his misery, his sinfulness, his own powerlessness, and plead with Jesus to come to his rescue. Lord, I am sinking. Secondly, he must be a humble person who realizes that only Jesus can save us. Only Jesus can save us. As long as a person keeps on trusting in the few coins in his plate and on his walking stick by his side, he will not walk towards Jesus and will remain both blind and a beggar. And same, similarly, when people are not contrite, not sorry for their sins, though they are in terrible situation, but they are clinging to something they think if they lose it, they will lose happiness. And so they cling on to that sinful life behavior. And secondly, they are not humble. They are not humble enough to go to the Lord Jesus, recognizing he alone can save then God, remember, always sends someone to lead us to Jesus. People come and told the blind man, came and told the blind man that Jesus was calling him. Courage, he is calling you. And we all need such persons or just events, joys or trials to lead us to Christ. We must ask, allow ourselves to be led. It might be a priest, it might be a catechist, it might be a nun, it might be a member in the family or a friend or perhaps a person we never met before. But that is Jesus' method to lead people to himself through someone else. Today, God's family is Mission Sunday. Mission Sunday, we remember missionaries and we also want our young men and women to give themselves totally to Christ, to be missionaries. Who are the missionaries? They were priests, they were nuns, they were lay people and still they are. And what do they do? They come announcing the good news. They are come announcing, telling us, humble yourself, repent of your sins, believe in the gospel, you and your family will be saved. They teach us, they accompany us, they encourage us, they are compassionate to us. And these missionaries, we remember them with gratitude. And we pray that there will be more and more people of such caliber, such great love for Jesus, who have discovered that without the faith, nothing is of value. And who know that if they do not preach the gospel, they are cursed. Woe to me, said St. Paul, if I do not preach the gospel. And in this context, I want to remind you, all of you, all of us, that each one here listening to me, every Christian has the responsibility of spreading the gospel. Spreading the gospel. If God gave you the gift of faith in Jesus, which saves you, then you are bound to share it. If you are a parent, share it with your children. If you are uh, 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 siblings, share it among your siblings. If you, among your friends, share the same faith. Among your colleagues, anyone who comes in touch with you, he is a prospective candidate for you to share your faith. Who knows? Just like that blind man was led to Jesus and who received the eyesight and more so the faith through your words, through your example, this particular friend of yours, this your spouse, this your son, this your friend might accept Jesus and might uh, the, thus accept the salvation. So Jesus wants us to be also those people who lead others to Christ. And then, remember, a great change takes place within us when we come to faith in Jesus. At baptism, we were given spiritual eyesight, namely faith in Christ. We were led to discover God's goodness, His mercy, His plans of love for us, the reward He has ready for us in heaven, and many things more. 
at the light which the spirit within us gave us we discovered the beauty of the world around us and of the thousand and one signs of god's love for us above all we discovered that all are god's children all are brothers and sisters whom we must love and we started to follow jesus along the road we became his disciples we embraced his commandments we lived them joyfully and we never thought of them as burdens but as assistance help early christians had good reasons to reflect time and again on the wonderful luck fortune that bartimaeus received If as Mark said, Matthew says there were two blind men and not just one the reason why the name of the second one was omitted was perhaps to tell us that we are that blind man we must take his place to be the son of Timaeus is no particular privilege but to become the child of God through faith in Christ Jesus is a greatest privilege that is a treasure that is a pearl that we must buy at all costs Jesus compared the kingdom to the treasure hidden and the pearl that the merchant was seeking we have received that treasure Jesus Christ our lord we have received that pearl faith in Jesus Christ the treasure we hold in in earth and vessels and remember the truth only christ can lead us to faith in him and only christ can save us but timaeus was fully convinced that jesus was his only hope to have back his eyesight that is why he took no notice of those who scolded him for his persistent shouting they little understood what it meant to be blind this was for bartimaeus the only chance the last chance and if he misses it he might remain blind all through his life in the first reading of today the prophet jeremiah conveys a message to the people of israel in exile god promises his people to bring back home even the weakest among them the blind and the lame women with children in arms women about to have child now look at those categories of people blind lame women with children women pregnant women who are about to give delivery these are the most unfitful people to undertake a journey of hundreds of miles nobody can nobody uh, of these can take undertake such a travel yet god through the prophet jeremiah promises to lead such people back home even as people are uh, handicapped or weak as these the message that jeremiah wanted to tell us is this we too live in exile this world is not our true home heaven is our home but only god can take us there even if we are lame deaf with a child with weight as long as we are willing to walk with him he will take us there that is why he sent us his son into the world to take us all home with him and we should never ever despair of our condition let none of us say oh my sin is too great it cannot be forgiven oh my condition is too grave nobody can rescue me Oh I am uh, undergoing depression there is no way out no no there is always the way out for the lord nothing is impossible for god we should bear in mind at every step of our powerlessness to attain salvation by ourselves jesus has told us no one can come to me unless he is drawn by the father who sent me and no one can come to the father except through me conscious of this we should turn to jesus at every step pleading with bartimaeus jesus son of david have mercy on me sure of his immediate reply your faith has saved you while urging us to f- joyfully follow him along the road so our resolution for this sunday possess a humble and contrite heart call out to him confessing our sins jesus son of david have mercy on me believe in him trust in him whatever be our condition he will can save us pull us out and then once we receive the light follow him along the road walk along with behind him in faith hope and charity and we pray father 
We thank you for the light of the Spirit. Help us to walk always according to it and follow your Son faithfully. In a special way today we pray that you may raise many vocations to missionary life, that we may have true missionaries who love you, who cherish your word, who recognizes that there is no salvation except in your name, and who will be willing to give up everything they possess, their family, their friends, all that they have, to even to travel far to to preach that good news through which people may come to know you, love you, serve you, and thus be saved. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.